My name is Geert-Jan Wielenge. I work for Oracle. I'm from Amsterdam. Mówię trochę pro Polsce, ale... Dzień dobry. Dziękuję bardzo. I know a few things, I know a few things. So, um, so thank you so much for coming. Um, in this session, I want to tell you about a really, really cool and new development um, in Oracle. Um, I'm a product manager involved with various open source technologies at Oracle, and everything that I'm going to talk about in, in this talk is free and open source. Um, the subject of this talk is um, how Oracle itself is working with JavaScript on the front end, and how you can use the same approaches, the same techniques, the same libraries yourself today to create applications in the same way that Oracle is doing. And all of this is really um, relevant and important because um, the JavaScript ecosystem is very volatile, full of change, libraries come and go all the time, and so it's important to um, architect your JavaScript front end on a basis um, that is stable. And if you base your applications on top of solutions that large enterprises like Oracle use, then you're, you're in a good place because um, large organizations tend to not change very quickly. Um, Oracle took several years to adopt uh, JavaScript. Um, Oracle has its own technologies like ADF and, and APEX. And there's also, of course, a lot of work done with Java. But on the front end, um, nowadays, a lot of work is being done with JavaScript. And there is a common architecture that's been developed within Oracle, and that's what I want to tell you about, and also how you can use it yourself to create your own applications. I want to tell you about the philosophy behind this, the philosophy that um, is, is used behind the choices um, of this architecture and the components, and I want to show you some, some live demos. I'm not going to show slides the whole way through. Uh, I want to give you some perspective on what this is about, and then I want to show you how you can actually use this yourself and create really cool-looking, really attractive um, uh, applications, both for the browser on the desktop as well as for mobile apps. If you're doing mobile development in JavaScript, this is something that you should really uh, take a look at. Okay. Now, um, a lot of people, a lot of organizations, enterprises are creating mobile apps like this. So these, are, these are business applications. These are not games. These are not toys. These are business applications. For example, Tesco, a time scheduling um, application for its uh, employees. And the second screenshot shows a um, healthcare-related medical application with blood work results. And of course, uh, the third one, you can see a map. So that's very common in, in business applications that deal with logistics. So in this case, it's an app created by a company in Belgium called Contribute. Contribute.be is their website. And they have a lot of skills in, uh, in front-end uh, JavaScript development. And they've created this application for uh, a truck driving uh, organization in the harbor in Antwerp. They can fill in a booking number, and then they can see where they need to go. And the final one shows an app with, uh, that's been translated. So internationalization is a typical uh, requirement you have in enterprise applications. And how do you solve that? How do you translate your application to multiple different languages? Um, and so this topic I want to look at as well. Um, typically, nowadays, when we're creating um, front ends and using JavaScript, for example, we want attractive-looking applications. Dashboard-type applications are typically what you're creating. And um, so here are some um, examples of that. Um, typical typical uh, dashboard um, applications, very graphical, very graph chart map oriented. You don't simply want to display some text or text fields. You, you do want data entry as well, of course, but ultimately you want very attractive widgets too. So I've touched on a number of things already that are relevant in the enterprise. Um, attractive widgets, um, internationalization, um, uh, also architecture. So these are the things that you think about um, in the enterprise. So the solution that, um, that, w that Oracle has come up with is called Oracle Jet. And this is the focus of this session, which is Oracle JavaScript Extension Toolkit. And you can actually go into the browser, and you can type oraclejet.org, and you'll come to, this, uh, to the home page. Um, and what's really important to understand is what Jet stands for. Jet stands for JavaScript Extension Toolkit. And the first important word in there is toolkit. 
um, this is a really a toolbox of loose solutions. It's not a framework. It's not Oracle Jeff. It would be Oracle JavaScript extension framework. It's not a framework. A framework implies a complete uh, architecture and, and a whole ecosystem, and, and you're locked into a very specific world, and you can't add things very easily into that world. Um, a toolbox implies you have different um, tools. So you have a hammer for one job, and you have a saw for another job, and you have a screwdriver for something different, and you don't need all of them at the same time. That's the philosophy behind JET, that there are specific things you need in, under specific circumstances. And so we want to give a toolbox. Um, we're using this toolbox internally, and this toolbox extends JavaScript. Of course, JavaScript was never originally created for enterprise applications. It was created for websites with HTML, JavaScript, CSS, make a nice website. It wasn't created for business uh, settings. So the idea behind Oracle Jet is, if JavaScript had been created for the enterprise from the start, it would have looked like this. It would have had the solutions that are part of this toolbox. It's, a, it's, a, it's, it, it, it's an extension to, the, uh, to, to JavaScript, the language, um, a, a set of tools that anyone needs anyway. It's nothing very surprising. So Oracle is very invested in this. So first of all, Oracle uses it itself for creating its front ends. So there are applications created throughout Oracle, of course. Oracle is thousands of smaller, larger organizations. And all of these organizations have been experimenting over the past years with JavaScript. Some have been using Angular, some have been using Sancho, some have been using this, some have been using that, some have been using Backbone. And at some point, the decision was made, we need to have a common architecture. We don't want to have every organization in Oracle creating their own little framework. We want everyone in Oracle to be focused on the business requirements of their application and not on the infrastructure. So we created a common architecture, and that common architecture is the focus of this talk, and you can use this common architecture too. You don't have to pay anybody, you don't have to ask anybody, you can start working with this architecture, this enterprise architecture today. Um, so aside from the fact that Oracle uses it for its front ends, it's also seen as a sales enabler. So imagine that you are a consultant from Oracle or a pre-sales person. You go to a customer and you talk about the Oracle Cloud and about Oracle Cloud services. At some point, you want to display data and you want to show how all those different um, services integrate, how you can get data from, from one service and integrate it with data from another service. And so you need to create a UI. And that UI, um, Oracle consultants and pre-sales people are creating by means of this solution. So it's a way for... Oracle consultants to make the case for the Oracle Cloud. Um, so Oracle itself is heavily invested in this. So if you use this, you know that you are creating applications on top of something that is very significant um, inside Oracle and not something that's going to go away tomorrow. So these are the key, um, the key uh, philosophy ideas, the uh, key um, aspects, the key uh, uh, mechanisms, the key ideas behind JET. So these are the themes that JET tries to address. So I've, I've mentioned already a little bit um, that it's used throughout Oracle. Um, I've, I've, I've talked a bit already about it being a sales enabler. It's not a framework, it's a toolkit. It's open source. Um, it's JavaScript. It's not a proprietary form of JavaScript. It's not a proprietary HTML tags. It's completely um, uh, open. Uh, uh, open existing JavaScript libraries. It's modern, um, HTML5, JavaScript, CSS3, and it's focused on the browser. So if you're creating applications for the browser on mobile or on web, this is a, a solution to evaluate. Also, if you want to create hybrid applications with Cordova, Cordova is built into this as well. So you can generate for, via uh, the Cordova integration with Oracle Jet an APK file or an iOS file. So it's really a complete solution for all the different uh, um, concerns you have as a um, JavaScript enterprise developer. So I've mentioned um, the sales enabler part. So it was, uh, uh, Jet was introduced to enable the selling of cloud services. And uh, Tesco is one example. So of course, very big um, retail store. Um, they compared various cloud providers compared Oracle to various competitors and evaluated that, well, the cloud, Oracle Cloud is kind of similar to the other ones, but one differentiator was 
this Oracle Jet story. So this, this toolkit of JavaScript solutions. And it really made a difference in making that, um, in helping Tesco to decide to choose the Oracle Cloud. And it, it helps Oracle to look um, and to be um, a, a modern, uh, innovative uh, organization. So it's a very vital part of, uh, within Oracle. Now, it's, this is very heavily focused on the browser. It's because the browser is on all the screens that you're working with or that ev everyone is using. People have mobile phone, they have you know, a tablet, they have laptop, they have desktop, they have all these different devices with different screen sizes. So you have concerns about responsive design. So it's really focused on browser-based applications, um, but also on Android and iOS uh, hybrid uh, development too. And the point is, in this context, you don't want to write your application for each different device. You want to write your application once. And in the enterprise, the way that's done um, in, in modern development is in JavaScript, on the front end. On the back end, could be Java, could be JavaScript, could be all kinds of things. You could have Node on the back end. Uh, we're not talking about the back end here. Where the data comes from is, is not uh, the focus here. The focus is how, does, how is the data visualized? How does the user interact with the data? And, and that's um, what this uh, solution is all about. JavaScript. Um, I'm not a very big fan of JavaScript, the language, or the, or the ecosystem. It's very volatile, full of change, it's not very stable. But it is the language of the browser, and even people who are not fans of JavaScript need to um, have some knowledge nowadays, um, especially if you're a front-end developer, of course, um, of, of this whole JavaScript world. Um, uh, you know, it's one of the top languages, it's in the browser, it's, um, it's also now where the enterprise um, is focused on. It's modern, this uh, solution. So um, JavaScript, CSS3, HTML5. Um, LTUI, so there are uh, style sheets by Oracle used for Oracle products, which you can use for free as well. And it's an open client architecture that can be extended. So what does that mean? Um, so let's go into the browser to two interesting websites. There is here required.js and there is knockout. Now, these are two libraries that have existed for a long time. They're not new. And most people in the JavaScript ecosystem will have heard of these two libraries or have used them. Require is focused specifically on providing modularity to a JavaScript application. And Knockout is specifically focused on providing data bindings between the view in HTML and business logic in JavaScript. Now, there's lots of documentation. There's a forum here. There's discussions, Stack Overflow. A lot of uh, knowledge is existing in the JavaScript ecosystem about Knockout and about Require. They're not the most modern libraries. A lot of people would say, well, these are not the, most, these are not the newest, and that's exactly the point. These are stable libraries that have existed for years. So Require provides a modularity solution. Knockout provides data binding. If you were to combine require and knockout into one application, you would have an Oracle Jet application. That's what, on, on the simplest level, uh, the way Oracle is developing applications is by using the modularity from require and the data binding from knockout. So, so you could say, okay, well, I could, I could go and combine require and knockout myself. Sure, you can do that, but it takes some work. And with Oracle Jet, we have packaged those two together um, we have tested the versions that we are packaging together, and we have added more on top of that. But essentially, this is what it is. If you, if you are using Require right now, and you're using Knockout right now, you are very close to having an, a, an application that is structured in the way that Oracle applications on the front end um, are structured. So let's take a look at one of these applications. So here is um, Oracle Jet uh, Quick Start Basic. I have this open. Uh, in the browser. Here it is. And um, you can see along the top right, there is this um, kind of tab structure. And as I select a different tab, th um, the content changes, right? Uh, what, what is interesting is that if you look in the, in the URL here, as we switch to a different tab, we stay within the index page. So we don't switch from one page to the other, but we use a single page application architecture. We are within a single page. So whenever we switch to a different tab here, we are still within the index page. Single page application architecture, that's a modern way to create front ends. Also, let, let's look at what happens when we change the resolution of the browser. So imagine we are on a mobile phone and we access this application. 
our, the, the phone app would look like this. You can see immediately that we have this hamburger um, uh, menu that you would expect on a mobile device. And when the application is uh, the size of a browser on the laptop, that hamburger icon disappears. So we have responsive design built into this. Now what you're seeing here is a template. I didn't do any coding for this. I went to the command line and I typed yo oracle jet. So if you're in the JavaScript ecosystem, you know about Yeoman. So Yeoman is a common scaffolding tool. You set it up by means of Node. So you install via Node. Node install Yeoman and Grunt. You can use Grunt by default or Gulp or something else. Grunt is the default uh, build system used. And then you can install the Oracle Jet generator. And then you can say, yo, Oracle Jet. And it will generate a starting point for you. When you open that in the browser, you will have exactly this. So you have a starting point. You have responsive design built in. And now you can start development. OK, so what does that mean? So you can see here we have dashboard and incidents and customers and about. So let's look at the architecture of the application. So first of all, we have this libs folder here on the left. I'm looking at the top left here. And you can see these are the libraries that are incorporated here. So you can see it require for modularity. You can see jQuery. Everyone using JavaScript uses jQuery. So Oracle Jet is an application that includes jQuery, um, require, uh, knockout, and a few other things. And these are all free and open source libraries. Require is free and open source library. Knockout is a free and open source library. We've bundled them together, put them into a one application template, and given you a starting point. So th those are the libraries. Um, they're hooked into the application by means of require. So if you know about require, then you will not be surprised by this code. This is simply a configuration file that sets up a require application. OK, so this is the bootstrapping of the application. Then um, we want to develop the application. So we imagine we want to work on the incidents um, page here. Okay? Now, there is a convention over configuration in Oracle Jet, whereby um, you can see here these names, dashboard, incidents, customers, about, and here they are. Here are the HTML pages. I've selected them over there. And here are the JavaScript uh, business logic. So for the about page, for example, the about page is defined by about.js and about.html. Customers.js and customers.html defines the customer's module. So this is require modularity. Each of, you can see here a define block from require. So we have our um, business logic um, is defined by means of define blocks from require. The view is just plain HTML. And then we have some CSS classes included. Uh, OJ stands for Oracle Jet for doing responsive design. So this is not a new concept this in, in a way. This is not a new framework. This is a collection of existing libraries and solutions and technologies. So let's imagine we want to work on the dashboard. So I'll click on dashboard there. So here is dashboard HTML, and here is dashboard JS. OK, so uh, let's change this. And I want to put in here, hello, Krakow. Save it. And we see in the browser. It now says so it's automatically refreshed. We can see hello Krakow over there. So we want to have more than text, right? We want to have components. So we go in here, we click on use cookbook. So I've, I started by clicking on get started, and I showed you how to use Yeoman to set things up. You can click on use cookbook, and here is the cookbook. Here are all the components. Big library of many components, graphs, charts, grids, tables, maps. So if you click on, for example, the chart here, so we are now on this page. So now we can see the chart. It's not just a picture, though. You can see the code over here. This is a bit like JS Fiddle. So here is the HTML side, and here is the JavaScript side. OK? JS, HTML. On the left-hand side, you can see all kinds of variations. So there's all this documentation built into this cookbook page. So I can look at animations on this page, and I can learn about data labels on this page. All this is lots of documentation. This is maybe the best documented uh, JavaScript um, solution out there, really. There's so much documentation that we've provided into this cookbook. Now let's take a look at, the, at this um, uh, chart. You can see this, uh, these buttons along the bottom that can change the view. But you, but you might think, well, I don't want this on my application. So right in the browser, you can select that toolbar. So I can see that the div says my toolbar. So that's probably the toolbar. So I take all of this, and I delete it here. And I click Apply. 
and now the toolbar is gone. So you can update the chart or whatever the component is live in the browser. So I've done that. So now I like this. So now I copy this from here. Copy. I go into my HTML and I just replace my Hello Cracker with that. And what we have here is a jQuery UI component that is bound via Knockout. So this, is, this data bind um, comes from Knockout. You can see here um, OJ chart uh, and, and um, all kinds of um, uh, help is here. Wait, let me just paste it again. So here we can see uh, the OJ chart and we can read documentation live um, directly in the editor. And here are all the different Oracle Jet components. And you, you can read about the, um, data bind. So this is the um, knockout attribute for connecting the view to the business logic. We can read in here about each of the um, properties. Um, in this case, we're using OJ chart. So these are the properties of OJ chart. But if we are using instead of OJ chart, uh, OJ button, for example, we will now see all the properties of OJ button. So context sensitive um, assistant is built into this editor, which is NetBeans. Um, so you can see here that we're using a chart. Um, and here are the properties of the chart. I'm using NetBeans. You can use any editor you like. Um, you can use uh, WebStorm, PHPStorm, Sublime, any editor that supports JavaScript, HTML, and CSS you can use for uh, creating these applications. So here we have a chart. And here are the properties, orientation value, stack value, bar series value. These are defined in JavaScript. So I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to select the properties. So here, I select them, copy them from here. And I'm going to go to the JavaScript side and paste them. OK, there they are. Here are the properties. You can see here there's hard-coded data. So you would want to change this to a REST endpoint um, accessing some data from somewhere. And finally, we want to include the chart. So we're using require to load only the components that we actually need. We don't want to load uh, all the Oracle Jet components, but only the chart. That's what we are using here. And now I'll go back to my application. And here's a dashboard with a chart. So this cookbook is full of recipes whereby you can copy and paste code and stick them into your application. Um, it could be an Oracle Jet application like this, but you can also use standard jQuery um, syntax to include these uh, comp components in your application. So if you're using Angular or some other framework, that's fine. If you can um, use jQuery in your application, you can use these components in your application. So we've added one of these components. So that's, you might think, that's not so very exciting. But let's take a look at some other more complex scenarios. Um, here, we have, um, so I mentioned internationalization. So here we have a date and time picker. So this date and time picker um, is one of the components from Oracle Jet. But what's important here is you can see when I hover over this uh, date and time here, you can see that there's a tooltip. Select time, select date. So now let's say we're in French. And you can see here um, the French tooltip. And here's a French tooltip. And when we're in Czech or Polish or whatever we want to choose, we can see that this is translated. And when we're in Arabic, um, this becomes Arabic, but also we have this right to left support. So internationalization is built into this as well. And um, also really relevant is um, this uh, concept here. So take a look. We have um, a, a widget representing one of our customers. This is a really interesting widget. It obviously took some time to build. Now imagine I have a colleague who's creating an application too. And they see my widget that I've created here, and they think, I want to use that in my application. Wouldn't it be nice if there was a, a standard by means of which these widgets were defined and that they could be exported and reused somewhere else. Well, there is such a standard, of course. It is the W3C Web Component Standard. Okay. Web Components. So you can create React Web Components, Angular Web Components. You can also create Jet Web Components. They're all are based on the same standard. So what does a, a Jet Web Component look like? So you can see here that there's this library tab. So I go into, so we're in this application, I go into the library, let's see how it's defined, library HTML. 
look at this. So this defines, so for each of the employees, this is a for each loop from um, knockout. And let's take a look at that for each. Um, let's take a look at those uh, employees. So here we have two employees defined on the, in the business logic side of this Oracle Jet module. And so for each of those employees, we want um, a demo card to be created. Well, what is demo card? Um, HTML is H1, H2, P, B, italics, and so on. But demo card doesn't exist. That's a custom element I created myself. Now, when we look in library.js, we can see that there's a reference here to a loader file. So I click on this and take a look at this. In one folder over there, you can see, called demo card, there is found a file called loader.js, which defines the custom element. So here is the name of the custom element, demo card. That's what I'm using over here. And all these different attributes are defined by this um, widget. So you can see here there's some JavaScript, and you can see that there's uh, HTML in here. And all of these are found within one single folder. So this defines that widget. I can zip up that folder and send it to my colleague, or he can use NPM to install that into, uh, into a different application. And you could also imagine there being a marketplace. Imagine we could zip up that folder containing the, the definition of that widget, upload it into a marketplace, and then anyone who wants to use my widget can just download that zip file, unzip it into their application, and use that tag, and have cool widgets like this. So this is one thing that is being worked on, a marketplace for Jet components. And also, what will be possible is for React components, because they're based on the same standard, to be integrated into these applications, or Angular components. Everything based on the web component standard will, in one way or another, be able to be integrated into these applications. Now look at this um, a, a even more complex example here. Um, so this is a memory game, obviously. Um, let's take a look. I, I wonder if I can get one right. But you can see what I'm trying to do, I think. I think we saw one before, this one. All right. So it's a memory game. Um, you can see it's a game. It's got cards. So let's take a look at the definition. Um, so in the graphics uh, folder, uh, graphics module, you can see there, uh, let's close this. So we have um, graphics.js. So here are defined all these images that you see. And we have graphics HTML. Now in here is used a custom element called demo memory game. And if I look inside demo memory game, I will see that, the, that demo memory game is defined out of multiple demo memory cards. So this, each of these cards are um, defined by a custom element called demo memory card. And there's a whole game which is defined by another custom element, which means you can create hierarchical widgets composed of other widgets. So really complex uh, widgets and, and uh, to visualize underlying data. Wrap them up, send them to a colleague, put them into a marketplace, extend applications um, in this uh, common manner. So that's really the, um, the direction that this is going. It's, an, it's really focused on being an open client architecture where you can add your own JavaScript libraries into it. You can create your own widgets and share them. Um, you can add internationalization. You can solve uh, typical uh, enterprise problems. So you can see it's, um, it's not a framework. It's not a closed system. It's very open, um, uh, especially relevant in, in these days where the JavaScript ecosystem is constantly changing. Every few months there are new libraries. And so this is the main problem that we're trying to solve here. We're trying to create an architecture by means of which we can anticipate change. Change is going to happen in the JavaScript ecosystem. There's going to be new libraries. You know, a few years ago, Backbone was very popular, and then Angular was very popular, and now people are all looking at React. React is the next uh, silver bullet, and in a few years, it will be the next thing. So rather than committing yourself to one of these solutions, don't commit yourself to these solutions. Instead, commit yourself to an architecture. Don't commit to a library. Don't commit to a framework. Don't commit to a technology. Commit to an architecture. 
an architecture that is modular, that is open to change, where you can take out the pieces and replace them with new pieces, where you um, have your back end um, based around REST endpoints, where you're loosely coupled. Now more than ever, it's important that we um, structure our applications in a responsible manner, um, because we need to change constantly with libraries coming and going and, um, and new technologies and new ideas and, uh, and so on. So these are some of the many uh, data visualization components, again, all for free. Um, but if you're using a different way of doing data visualization, um, especially if it's based on jQuery, you can integrate that very easily into your application. So um, I, I showed you these, uh, these widgets created by web components, but in this case, this is the jQuery, the standard jQuery date picker um, included in the application. And you, you can see as I select a different date, you can see the currently selected date um, appear below the, uh, the date picker. So any jQuery UI component you can integrate very easily. If it's based on something else, um, depending on the way it's structured, you should also be able to integrate that. So it's really a, 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 a canvas, a, a a placeholder for you to, uh, to integrate um, various technologies. Um, yes, so I've mentioned this a couple of times. Uh, JavaScript is constantly changing. New specifications are coming up all the time. You need to be very careful with which choices you make. Um, one thing that's been apparent over the past years is moving from Angular 1 to Angular 2 is very difficult and not really backward compatible and all kinds of problems arise and because that is an application framework and it is not based on, on a loosely coupled library solution but it's based on a uh, application framework which is very closed um, and with very specific um, architectures and philosophies in mind. So try and focus on a, a modular um, approach. Open source, so it's all free and open source. It's very strange, uh, in a way, from Oracle to hear that uh, Oracle is doing um, open source uh, stuff. But in fact, if you go to github.com slash Oracle, you will see that there are many things on GitHub by Oracle. And one of these is Oracle Jet. And so the only part of the, this, everything I've told you that Oracle has actually done is the are the components because the modularity is done by require and the data binding by knockout and this by that and this by that, all these third party libraries. But the part that is by Oracle is the part that connects uh, with the um, components. So there's a component, long list of um, Java, uh, jQuery UI components here, OJ chart, OJ button, uh, here they all are and you can just take them and include them in your own application too. Um, so, enterprise ready. Uh, I've talked about internationalization. So, each of the Oracle Jet components is um, translated. And you can see this when we go into the folder libs. You can see here there is Oracle Jet, dist, js, libs, and oj, and then resources, nls. And you can look here, all the different languages that are supported. And we go all the way down. You can see also Polish. All the components are available in, you know, Polish translations and as well. So uh, all these different languages are supported out of the box. You can imagine why, because it, this was initially created for developers inside Oracle. And you don't want each developer to have to translate all of the components that they use. So they've been translated once. And you can, just, you can leverage the same um, translations yourself. Um, so it's about internationalization. It's also about accessibility. So each of the components can be accessed by a screen reader or by a mouse or by a keyboard. Very important for um, uh, specifications and requirements around ac accessibility. Also, the architecture. So, this, so by default, you have this structure of view models and views. You can override this. There's different ways of overriding that. But this is the default architecture. So if I move from one organization in Oracle to another organization, and I start working on a different project, I immediately know what the structure is, because this is the way that it's structured. We can make subfolders, and you can make all kinds of variations on this. But um, there are predefined um, conventions built into the architecture. There's also templates for getting started. Um, so, um, with, with this responsive design and single page application architecture built in, so that you don't have to think about those things yourself. 
uh, data visualizations, and I've mentioned a few times, used uh, throughout Oracle uh, very heavily. So how would you get started with this yourself? Um, so the homepage is oraclejet.org, and on this page, you'll see along the bottom, these are the libraries that are used. jQuery, jQuery UI, Knockout, Require, Cordova, all very common libraries. If you click on Get Started, um, you go to the page that I showed. So here, you can um, install um, via Node um, Yeoman, and then you can run Yo Oracle Jet. Or if you're using NetBeans, um, uh, you can go to, the, to, this, um, to, the, to get a template from here. And what's interesting as well about NetBeans is it's becoming an Apache project. I don't know how many people know this, but um, this is going to be Apache NetBeans. So in addition to Apache Maven, Apache Groovy, Apache Ant, there will be Apache NetBeans because uh, uh, NetBeans is being donated by Oracle to Apache. And a lot of Oracle developers will continue to work on NetBeans in Apache, but you can be involved in this too. And this will be the first and only development tool that is part of Apache. Um, so it's a really uh, interesting, uh, interesting new development um, taking place. It's taking some time for everything to, or for the code to land there, but um, there's a there's a clear process um, for that um, that we're working on. So you can either use the command line Yeoman, or you can use uh, NetBeans to get started. Once you have the code, you can open it in Sublime, in WebStorm, PHP Storm, whatever you like. Um, to start working on this um, on, on this this architecture, then you have the cookbook that I showed you. And each of them, uh, each of these are recipes where you can look at um, the code for those components. Um, there's also this Work Better app. So if you're on the home page, you click on Try Demo, you'll be on this Work Better app page, and this is kind of the reference implementation of Oracle Jet. And the source code is available too. It's an employee management system. And you can imagine that this is a dashboard and the uh, human resource manager can look at the dashboard and see information about the employees. What is the open headcount? How many new hires are there? How many terminations? What are my notifications? And each of these blocks that you see are defined by Oracle Jet uh, module, so using require. What is the average compensation? So this is really a view on the um, HR structure of an organization. And as you go further into the application, so here's information about one employee. Uh, again, it's a dashboard. So th this is a common way of, of of visualizing um, applications nowadays. Um, this is very graphically appealing. You can see these charts. These are from the Oracle Jet component suite. And um, we're in a single page, so a single page architecture, um, index HTML. We don't go from one page to another page that we get from the server. Instead, we just um, load and unload modules um, into, the, um, into the home page. And you can see that as we go to a smaller size, we have this responsive button on the left-hand side here, um, which disappears when you make it large again. So you can use this application as well um, as your starting point. Now, um, there's a tab here called Learn. And here are the learning resources. So there are tutorials, there's a hands-on lab, there's a MOOC, a three-week MOOC. You can learn all about this for free. Um, and for each of the three weeks, you get 10 YouTube clips, and you can follow um, a, a real course structure. Um, and you can see that there are, um, this, aside from this application that we just saw, there's also a mobile app, a complete mobile app. We can, we can do a live demo here. Um, so this is what the application looks like um, when it's in the browser. Let's see if we can start it up. Okay, here. So this looks like a like pretty cool um, mobile app. So we skip this. And we log in. And the code for this is also available. You can just download this. You can hear, hear the incidents for a, a technician. There's a dashboard, and here's the, here's the list of items that they need to work on. And here's a map where they need to go to. Very typical enterprise type uh, application. Map showing uh, where to go to to fix uh, incidents and so on. So this is also a, a small uh, demo app that's kind of realistic. In addition to that, there's a support page and there's a forum. You can get free help. Uh, if you like, you can get a support contract around this too, but you can get free help on the forum and the uh, Oracle Jet engineers are there to help you. There's a development guide, which is a PDF document. It goes into typical problems. How do you design responsive applications? Everyone wants to know that. How do you create single page applications? How do you use require? 
and, and these kinds of uh, concerns. Um, and there is also success stories. So if your organization does something with this, um, we would like to promote your organization. So you will get a dedicated page. So you see there's many organizations listed here and it goes on um, to the next uh, page and there's more coming. Um, you can see here um, the, the organization talks about what they do, how they use Oracle Jet. So you can see some real life examples, what is happening um, outside Oracle with, uh, with this solution. Um, and that is the uh, success stories part of this. You can also see some of the Oracle applications that are created with JET. Um, so that's, the, um, that's basically the story. Um, so um, here are some other examples. Oracle Solaris dashboard. And now you can recognize this from what we've talked about. These graphs and charts come from the Oracle JET component library. And another example, data visualization cloud service. Now, one question you might have is, what happens if the libraries that we base this solution on stop being developed? What happens if require stops being developed? What happens if knockout stops being developed? Well, these are open source solutions. So if the require team says we won't develop this any further, Oracle could take over. Oracle could say we are the new sponsors of require or we are the new sponsors of knockout. Or we could say, let's take out require and put some other uh, modularity solution in there. Let's remove knockout, put something else in there. It will mean some rewriting of, of the application, but not everything, just certain very specific parts. Um, it's about being ready for change, being ready for, um, for, the, um, for change in the, in the JavaScript ecosystem. So this is um, how Oracle applications on the front end are being written nowadays. Um, other technologies are also used very heavily, Apex and ADF. If you're from uh, an Oracle connected organization, you'll have heard of those uh, technologies. But for the organizations um, in Oracle where JavaScript is used in the front end, this is the standard way in which it's done with require, with knockout, with jQuery UI widgets, with the cookbook, um, there, there are internal mailing lists where things are discussed. Um, there are trainings and tutorials that we're giving all the time. If you are from an organization where you find this interesting, please let me know after the session. I'll give you my business card. We would love to come to your organization and talk about these ideas um, because I think, especially in, in, in the enterprise, especially in larger organizations, there's a lot of concern about how viable the JavaScript ecosystem is for our business applications. And this is a way in which we are trying to, to solve all those problems via a loosely coupled open um, architecture. And we'd like to get feedback from people what you think about this and also you know, use this. Um, it's, and there's a lot of energy and enthusiasm um, behind this throughout Oracle. So the um, starting point is to go to oraclejet.org, um, to the homepage. And from there, you will find all the different um, um, starting points. Um, there's the online training course, which in three weeks teaches you everything. Um, there's the cookbook with um, all its content. There are the learning um, resources. There's the success stories, where we would love to add um, your organization to. There's a support page with forums and videos and blogs and so on. And um, that MOOC, um, that massive open online course has a site as well where you can see all the source code. So each of those lessons in the MOOC ends with a small task and you need to complete the task and it means um, uh, that, you know, here, here's the source code if you get stuck and um, we're very happy to help you with that. The most important direction uh, that um, JET is going in is this idea of widgets. So I discussed this about um, this idea of creating web components. So what we want to encourage in Oracle is not that people create um, applications, but that they create widgets and that these widgets communicate with each other. And really the ideas of component based development we're trying to encourage. So um, the, the uh, strong direction is the creation of new widgets um, 
following the Web Component Standard, getting people in the community to also create widgets like that, and being able to share them via a, um, a common marketplace. And maybe you could create widgets and you could sell them um, to other people. So there's really a, a, a really revenue-oriented um, uh, direction here as well. There could be organizations who focus purely on creating um, attractive widgets based on web components as the web component standard becomes um, more solid. So um, I'd like to leave a few uh, minutes maybe for questions. And otherwise, um, oraclejet.org is the website. There's a Twitter handle, there's a Facebook page, there's YouTube, we're doing all kinds of things um, and invite you to be involved in this. Thank you very much.